Matthias Lohr from Restsalt and here's another video from home. Uh, today I would like to go into more details about what I did in the last video, talking about the detection rates and what happens if you have two antennas on both sides. So we got questions about that. The first question was um, what happens if you have two floor antennas uh, next to each other and the other question was how um, is it when you have two antennas coming from both sides with more distance between them. So um, I'm trying to up my game here and replace my whiteboard with a little piece of paper and try to explain what's happening. So first of all, what we need to consider is that if you have, let's say you have a road like this and we have people running along there, um, what we are talking about here is not if you will detect a single tag somewhere on the road. It is about having hundreds of people coming through there and getting detection rates in the um, somewhere above 99.8%. Okay, so that's that's what we're talking about. Okay, and um, so if you let's say set up a single mat of antennas and another mat of antennas like this and you test with a single transponder on those, you will be detecting them on both mats without any problem. Okay, so all those um, things that we're talking about here right now are not for a single transponder over the mats here. It is about having uh, large scale events with hundreds or thousands of participants and in the end reaching the goal of 99.8% or better on most of our events, um, we are far better than 99.8%, but remember 99.8% still means that two out of 1,000 could be missing. Okay, so obviously we want to be better than that and that's why we try to optimize everything that we can. So um, the huge benefit of a setup with a ground antenna compared to a side antenna is that if you look from it, uh, on it from the side, let's say we have the ground antenna sitting here like this, this ground antenna points into the sky. Okay, so the field of the antenna goes up into the sky. So if you have another antenna sitting next to it, both will be pointing into the sky, let's say like this. Okay, so the interference between the two antennas will be at a point pretty far up. So normally a transponder can never be that far up if they are far apart enough. Okay, so the, the, what I was referring to in the last video, um, that a transponder should never be in the field of two antennas at the same time, is actually not the problem here if uh, you keep a certain distance between the antenna mats. So we recommend um, normally, or what I always recommend to have at least a distance of, um, between um, the antenna mats um, of um, the length of the antenna mat. So in our case it would be maybe four meters, something like that. Um, but the more the better obviously, but the, the issue here is that you don't really run into the problem that we were discussing in the last video, that a transponder is detected by both antennas at the same time, because the region up here where the transponder will be um, actually in the field of the antenna is so high up and that's not somewhere where a transponder would normally be. So in a setup like that, especially in Germany or in Europe with um, A and B frequencies, what you are trying to do is actually to um, keep the two decoders or readers inside the decoders working on two different frequencies because of um, reflections that you can have around here. So let's say you have a, a street lamp sitting over here. Now I know this drawing gets really ugly, but it's, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do here on my balcony. So let's say we have a street lamp up here and actually the signal from this, um, this antenna mat here is reflected by that street lamp going back here. If those were working, running on the same frequency, um, they would make each other's life harder to actually see the transponder um, reply. So what we want is that the two readers work on two different frequencies so that they can use their filter that um, we were referring to in the last video with um, a red or a green light filter basically so that B only is looking for green and A is only looking for um, red uh, signals and even if the green signal is reflected by the street lamp um, then reader A doesn't care because it's not looking for the color B, it's looking for the color A. 
Okay, so that's why we want to have two different frequencies um, uh, in Europe European setups. Now, um, the question is why don't we need that in, for example, FCC US setups? The reason for that is that is that um, the uh, frequency band in Europe is very small. Actually, we only have four different frequencies which are very close together in Europe. And A and B each refer to two different frequencies. So the readers are switching back and forth between those two frequencies. And um, they're so close together um, that um, they would disturb each other if they were on the same frequency. Now in the US, we have a completely different scheme, and that's almost, almost everywhere else in the world is the same thing, um, where we have something we call frequency hopping, where actually the frequency band is really wide, and the uh, reader can or has to hop between all the different frequencies all the time. So two readers close to each other will um, very unlikely to be on the same frequency because they're hopping around 50 different frequencies all the time. That's why we don't have the A and B setting um, in, in the US and other countries where we have a large wider band. So this is um, the setup of um, two floor antennas pointing into the sky where you don't actually have the problem that a chip will be um, in the field of two antennas. You more are trying to mitigate the issue um, that the um, readers are disturbing each other um, because of being on the same frequency. Okay. Now obviously if you put them close um, to each other, um, especially if you put them um, so close, let's say like this, that a chip can be in the field of both antennas at the same time, you will be running in the sa uh, same issues as you would have um, with side antennas. So let's look at side antennas. So there we have a, a different issue. Try to draw this again here. So we have our street and we set up um, one side antenna on this side and one side antenna on this side and the fields are actually like this. So let's say you have some kind of tripod here. Please excuse my, my drawing. It's um, kind of difficult here to do a good drawing. <laughs> so we have two side antennas and you have a transponder here sitting in the middle and it's, it's um, obviously in the field of both antennas at the same time. So what you then need to do is, um, if you connect it to a decoder, you connect one on this side and one to this side, and you don't connect it to two, two different um, decoders. And the reason why um, this is necessary is because if you would connect it to um, another decoder, so like, like this, those two decoders um, would run their readers independently. They wouldn't know of each other, and they would try to talk to the chip um, at the same time. And this is what I was referring to in the last video. This is not possible. A chip cannot talk to two readers at the same time. Now, the question, one question that was asked was, if the street gets wide, um, what happens? Does it, does it help to then have two decoders? Now, um, actually, yes. So if you would have a chip somewhere over here, so very close to one antenna and far away from the other antenna, actually, if you, if you look at the brightness of the light that comes from this antenna to this chip here, um, this chip would um, only see this antenna and would not see this antenna over here because this would be much darker than this one. And um, this can actually work for chips over here. So for, for chips close to one of the two antennas, it will work, okay, because it, uh, um, that decoder will, will only, or that chip will only be talking to that decoder and, and that will work. The problem is the chips in the middle. For the chips in the middle, there's no difference of how wide the street is. Actually, it's, it gets even worse because for chips in the middle, um, it's difficult to detect them anyway because the distance between antenna and chip is getting further and further and um, and there you need every single chance that you can get to, to capture that chip. So um, for the chip in the middle it doesn't matter how far away those two antennas are because they're both far away at the same distance from the chip. So the chip in the middle still has the same issue. Yeah. So um, what can happen is that if you have a large race like this that um, where you have a wide um, street and coming with two side antennas, which is not a preferred scenario anyway. Um, in, in that scenario, um, you might end up seeing slightly better detection rates and higher hit rates, especially for chips being on one of the sides, um, but you will miss the ones in the middle. 
okay? So you will not, not see them. You will completely miss the ones in the middle, um, and, but your detections may look even better because you have a higher chance of, of, of seeing one on each side, okay? So that's, that's a little bit tricky to understand, um, but that's what's actually going on. So the important thing here is to still, if, if you can, connect both sides to one decoder, because then that decoder will not interfere with, its, with itself, and, um, and you, you will have the highest detection rates possible. So I hope that explains it a little bit better. I hope you, you like my, my drawings here. <laughs> and, um, and I hope I can get back to, to our studio soon so that we can, we can do proper videos um, with the whiteboard and everything again. So yeah, see you soon. <laughs>